there's nothing that makes me say, oh, yep, they're going to do that. My first thought is, oh, yep, they're lying. Yeah. Which I shouldn't be doing. But apparently I have to now because, you know, you have, I'll say it like this. The lesser of two evils always leaves evil if you take one of them away. Mm -hmm. Always. If, if you go for the lesser of two evils, you take one away, you still have evil. And that's what we have. Yeah. We have a system that we know how to get out of. We know that most of our, that all of the governors should be mandating masks, but they won't because they want to be president in 2024. So they got to, um, they have to promote themselves to the fringe right. Right. We have um, a minimum wage that should be at least $20 an hour. I always say 35, but that's just me talking. And mm -hmm. that gets voted for and goes away. We may not get an infrastructure deal this year. If it goes into 2022, it's done. And like I said, I don't see a good outcome for the Democrats. I, I say, I still say they're going to lose the House, they're going to lose the Senate, and they may lose the White House. Yeah. This is just like you had the chance and you blew it. But I think they wanted to blow it on purpose because I don't think that they really care. No. Hence, Chris, the sentiment having people arrested for protesting outside of her office, which is perfectly legal to do. But I don't like what they're saying. Right. And that's right. why. Which is, which is like, I, I hate to say this, but that's like the ultimate white woman thing to do is to call the police on someone who's not breaking the law. It, and that that I didn't want to me, say it. I, I didn't want to say it. No, that's I mean, like, I am ashamed because I'm you know, when I'm walking down the street, I don't want someone to think I might call the police for no reason. But no, I mean, there's no reason for anybody to think I wouldn't because because that's something white women do is we cry and we call the police. It's yep. just, it's disgusting. It's, don't let it's us know. And I, I hate it. She did go Karen on that. Apologies to all the Karens out there who are actually named Karen. But wow, she really did. Yes. It's like, yes. uh. There's no difference between her and the woman in the, in the park who called the cops on a guy walking his, I think he was walking his dog through the park and she called no, the police. No, he was, no, he was bird watching. He was oh, bird watching. Right. She was walking her dog without a leash. Off and he said, leash. Yeah. yeah. And he was like, hey, can you put a leash on that dog like you're supposed to? Mm -hmm. And then she went all crazy talking about, <laughs> oh, he's going to attack me. And meanwhile, she's choking the poor little dog and the dog is choking. I'm like, take that dog away from her. Yeah. Take that dog away from her. She, but of course, she does. So that's, I mean, that's how it, I mean, geez. That's just like the protesters were that gentleman in the park doing something they're allowed to be doing. Um, and there was no reason for her to call the police. It's, it's ridiculous. Well, yeah, it is. They infringed on her right to be stupid. Yeah. I mean, if, if you keep doing that, next thing you Existing know- Existing while not agreeing. Yeah. Meanwhile, She'll get to say some. I just wonder if she runs for re-election, what is she, what is she campaigning on? I'm like, I'm the, I don't see it. I'm like, I, I think she's a one dunner. I don't even think they're gonna have to worry about primary because I can't see what she would run on. How can you spend being against the government negotiating with farmers to lower drugs? How, how do you spend that? Well, we don't want government interference. They're not gonna lower it on their own. Mm -hmm. Like how? And maybe I'm just thinking, and I don't live in Arizona, so I don't know what's going on in Arizona. Right. But I'm like, I, I can't see this because I don't know what she would literally campaign on. But I say that about Joe Manchin. He keeps getting reelected. I don't yeah. know why. Well, I know why he does. He runs to the right of the Democratic Party and he does it on purpose because Trump won 
West Virginia like by 40 points. Like he won West Virginia by a lot. So that's yeah. pretty much a Republican state. So he has to, not that I'm giving him an out, but he has to go to that right wing to stay in office. And which is, I think, what Chris, Kristen Sinema is doing because there's a lot of conservative people in Arizona. But doesn't and Arizona have all oh, that? They do have that Republican um, governor. I forgot about that. Because I'm so used to Arizona voting blue that I guess I didn't even, yeah, you're right. But she, no, but she literally said, hey, I'm for, we should have a living wage. Then she gets there, does that little dumb dance and thumb down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Really? Why did she just say from the beginning, no, work for those slave laborers. Work at $1.25. I don't care. But it, it just really frustrates me. But audience, so we are at the point where we're going to take our five minute break. We're going to come back with our second topic, which I think we'll find really interesting. And I'll, we'll see you here in just a bit. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second half of the Progressive Queens. I'm Tracy. I'm joined by Jenny. And we're going to get into our topic for today. And it is it's an unusual one, and I'll tell you all why I picked it. So the topic is, are progressives too petty? And there's two reasons I picked this. There's two wings of the progressive party, or the progressives. You have the progressives that make sense, and they can talk about their issues. And then you have the far, almost right wing leaning of the progressives, like your Jimmy doorknobs and that kind of group that no matter what you do, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to explore, you know, things like, do we expect too much? Do we think that change is really going to come at the federal level? So that's the kind of surface discussion that I wanted to have today. And that's why I picked it, because there's some, there's one incident that really sticks out in my mind. And that's when Representative Cori Bush, she slept outside mm -hmm. to draw attention to the eviction moratorium at that time that's going to expire. Right. I remember when the Biden administration was like, no, we can't, we can't do anything about it because of X, whatever reason they were coming up with, but then ended up expanding it anyway which why didn't you do that from Jump Street? But that's a whole different discussion from a different day. But um, she slept outside. And at first, um, a certain person, who I'm just gonna refer to as doorknob, said, oh, well, that, that's never gonna work. You should do it this way and this way and this way, and you're a fraud. And then, when the, the protest appeared to be successful, if she got, you know, the moratorium expanded, well, why didn't she do this before? Sometimes I want to ask people to the far left, right of the progressive wing, are you really progressive? Because you can't be. Um, I, I will give you that there are a lot of people um, who are unsatisfied with, with everyone for some reason. And I'll, I have to say, I, I'm not perfect. I'm, I'm so far from perfect. And I'm pretty sure that AOC would say the same thing about herself and that Cori Bush would say the same thing about herself. And um, along with, um, uh, Jaya Paul, uh, I can't remember her first name. Give me uh, a Jaya Paul. Yeah, okay. Um, and yeah, I every, don't know I, her name now. I know how to say her name now because that first time, like, no, I'm like, I'm getting this one. <laughs> and I don't think any of them would claim to be perfect, nor do I think that Jimmy Dore would claim to be perfect or that the Young Turks would claim to be perfect. Um, and yet they're so interested in pointing out imperfections in others. I, well, I don't say that about AOC. I don't, 
she doesn't have a radio show that I listen, that I listen to. I, I honestly have never listened to Jimmy Dore or the Young Turks um, because I do, I do see evidence of that. I see evidence in, in posts on Twitter or Facebook about, um, about which candidate or which politician they're disappointed with today rather than lifting up one who's doing something really good or, or saying, oh, I'm disappointed in this person for whatever. But that doesn't mean that I hate them and that I no longer think they deserve to be part of the party and that they don't they don't belong. No, I mean, they're in the pro they're progressives for a reason. Right. And just like you and I, when when I first started, you and I had that discussion on abortion. We, we didn't agree. Right. I, I we came to we came to an understanding. We didn't agree at first. And that's how that's how. That's how progress is made. No, but we're talking, both pro-choice. What's both, that? Both of us are pro-choice. Oh, yes. Um, there and was now, a I certain, yeah, for the audience, yeah, we went from Claude, we just, and there was a point where we died like, yeah. Exactly. It was a pet, it was a, a slight differentiation. Exactly. We right. had different approaches, but the same solution. Right. So, <laughs> and I feel like, um, I feel like that's that's just what happens in in every office situation, in every every other work type situation, right? You all have the same goal, but you don't always see eye to eye on how to do it, right? Um, that doesn't mean you can no longer work with that person, unless you say I can no longer work with that person. So when when people write off a candidate, that's them saying. I can't work with this person. And you, yep, no, yep, that's true. It, but here's where I want to slightly differentiate with what you're saying. Because Dora, sometimes he does. He, unfortunately, I had to watch one, a couple of shows just so I could feel like, okay, I know what his tendencies are. He definitely presents himself like nobody knows more than me. I know everything. Now, he may say, oh, I'm not perfect. But his attitude, his post and the he is, Mm -hmm. he's literally one of the reasons I think that Nina lost with the progressive and this is why I'll say it in this way oh. he kept promoting this oh well she's going to be corrupt of course she hadn't won the office yet right she all she said was that hey sometimes I'm going to make decisions that you disagree with that's I mean that that to me I wish more politicians would say that just be yeah. like, thank you. Okay, now we can talk. But he was like, oh, well, she's not progressive and she'll be crooked just like the rest of them. And of course, you know, his whole stand started with that whole, and I still think it was dumb, the whole force the vote thing. I still think it's stupid. Nobody's going to convince me that it's not. It was not a good plan. You never had an alternative. And when you don't have alternatives, you're going to fail. Hello, this is Tracy, and I want to let you know that the video that you just watched is just a snippet. And to see the whole wonderful episode, you need to be a Patreon. The link to be a Patreon is in the description section. Please check it out and please support. We need um, as much support as possible. Remember, you can always... Um, subscribe to our page and be notified when we get new videos. But if you want to see the whole video in its entirety, unedited, um, just, just off the cuff, no filters, no anything, be a Patreon. You can start as low as just $1 per month or $5 per month. Um, we'll start to have polls, um, Sometimes I'll drop into the Patreon once we get a couple more members. But again, I just want to encourage you to support us on the Patreon. The link is in the description and have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.